Imagine the earth is changed, the sky has changed, where you cannot recognize anything, you don't know where you are. You are gathered with all the creation from the beginning of the creation of this world to the end of time. Barefooted, naked on that day. The matter is too serious for anybody to even look at one another. On the day a man will flee from his brother, his mother, his father, his wife and his children. For every person that day will be a matter adequate for him or her. The only thing you will be saying, my soul, my soul, nafsi, nafsi. The voices are silenced. The people don't, they don't know what to say anymore. Imagine, uncountable numbers of people, you don't hear a single whisper. The scales are brought. Allah says in the Quran, and on that day, we will place the just scales, and so no soul will be treated unjustly, even with an atom's worth of deed. And if it were the size of a mustard seed of good deeds, we will reveal it, we will bring it to the scale. And if it were the size of a mustard seed of bad deeds, we will bring it and place it on the scale. Such a judgment, accountability by us is sufficient enough. Yeah, and every single whisper from those records and placed into that scale. The scale, however, is a type of creation that Allah had created. The Prophet ﷺ said, the scale will be set up on the day of judgment. If the weight of the heavens and the earth are to be measured by the scale, this scale will do it efficiently. Without any strain whatsoever, it will weigh it. In another hadith, the scale can contain the heavens and the earth if need be. The, literally, the angels asked, for whom does this scale measure, O our Lord? And Allah replied, whomever I will among my creation. Then the angel said, O oh Allah, indeed, we didn't worship you the way you are worthy of. Shufa. Compare that to a person who deceives themselves today. The greatest loss on that day are people who are bankrupt. Ar Rasul Sallallahu said to his companions, do you know who the bankrupt person is? And the people replied, he is the person who has no wealth. He said, no, the bankrupt person is the one who comes on the day of judgment. And he or she has done so many good deeds. They've given charity, they've prayed, they've fasted, they've tahajjud, everything. They've done so many good deeds. So you've seen them and your weight is there. You've done all these good deeds and you think you're going to enter paradise. But he or she has abused this person or stolen from this person, or harmed this person, or backbit this person. On that day, when that person comes to call for their right, Allah orders the angels to take from the deeds of that person. So it comes and takes them from the scale, and gives them to the scale of the person of the victim. That victim scale begins to become heavier. Depending on how much oppression that person has done to the victim or victims, more and more of their good deeds are taken off the scale. The oppressor's scales is now twisting the other way. And the victim's scale is now getting heavier on the good side. You think to yourself, oh God, who else is there? Suddenly someone comes up, you think, oh no, I forgot all about this person. They keep coming up. Where did this person come from? Where did that person come from? Oh, you are reminded. 
Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, this person becomes bankrupt of all the good deeds. Now if there are more victims that come along, what happens? They complain, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. The angels say, the oppressor has no more good deeds to give. They're all run out. Allahu Akbar. So then Allah says, very well. We have forbidden oppression today. Take from the victim's bad deeds and add them on top of the oppressor's bad deeds. Rasul Sallallahu says, he or she is dragged away and placed into hellfire upon their faces. This is a believer or a disbeliever. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us in Sahih Hadith, which is in Muslim, he said, beware of jealousy. Jealousy is when you are envious towards your brothers and sisters and you wish that they didn't have the blessing that they had. And you begin to possibly backbite them or try to want to do things to make them lose it. For verily jealousy eats away your good deeds just as fire eats away wood. You see those good deeds they're shown to you. Suddenly they have no weight. Why? Because the warnings Allah gave us, we did not heed them. And one of the ways is harming the rights of others. They will take your deeds. And you know what? No one can trust anyone. Wallahi, the son or the daughter will try and take good deeds of their father and mother. And the father and mother will try to take good deeds of their son and daughter, of the brother, of the sister, of the wife, of the husband. Anyone take even one good deed. We want them. We want to make our scales heavier on that day. Just to get that extra deed and those rewards. Compare that, however, to pious believers who used to be companions in this life. On the day of judgment, they will congratulate one another. It is reported in one of the hadiths that a man will be brought to the scale on the day of judgment. And he has done deeds as far as your eyes could see. The angels carry his deeds and they're about to be placed on the scale. Sizes of mountains of good deeds. And when they are placed, Allah says, admit my servant into paradise with my mercy. The servant then says, my Lord, I want to enter paradise with my deeds. He thinks that he can get more for his deeds. So then Allah says, very well, if that's the way you want to measure it, then we have to be fair. You owe me something. You owe me the blessing of the eyesight which I gave you. I want you now to repay me for that. So the angels bring the blessing of the eyesight and they place it in a scale. And it is heavier than all the good deeds the man had done. He says, enter him into hellfire. And the servant says, Rabbi, I want to enter because of your mercy. Allah's mercy is the thing which we want. A person will come on that day. Allah will order the bringing of 99 books that record the deeds of the man in his life. Each book is as far as the sight of the man can see. Records full of bad deeds. Allah will say, Go with your records to be weighed. He goes and then he comes back in misery. He's lost. Then Allah says, Do you have an, any objection to what our angels wrote in your records? And he will say, No, Ya Rabb. I have no objections. Allah will ask him, Do you have any excuse? And the man will say, No, my Lord. I have no excuse. Allah will say, but you still have with us a reward of a single good deed as no one is wrong today. And then Allah will give this man a card to place on the scale. In this card, the following words are written. There is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad Wasallam is his messenger. And the man says, oh God. How heavy does this card weigh to the weight of 99 books of records? It weighs nothing. And the card will be placed and it will cause the bar of the books to swing to its side sharply. Because, my dear brothers and sisters, nothing weighs heavier than the word of Tawheed. La ilaha illallah. So you say it and you fulfill its conditions. Allah swears an oath, He says, this message of Islam 
will reveal or is a word of separation of the two criterion separation of right and wrong the good from the evil the separation of between who was righteous and who was not the truth will be revealed in all of its value and there are more records being brought more rewards on top of that there is also the fasting as siyam did you not, did you not hear the hadith from sallallahu where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith al-qudsi everything that my servant does is for him or her Except for fasting, it is mine. And I will reward especially with it. On that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep those deeds hidden. Even the angels don't know the value of those deeds for that fasting person. Voluntarily and compulsory. Allah will bring the special rewards and so their scales will even increase. Oh, what great light and what great happiness that servant of Allah will be on that day. Allah tells us in the Quran about the difference between these two. And as we move on from stage to stage in the hereafter, you see faces getting brighter or faces getting more misery. Faces that were once bright become a little bit miserable. Faces that are a little bit miserable, they become a little bit brighter. Until finally, the criterion, the absolute distinction is made. So now the scales have been resolved. What is next? Now the sentencing. The angels have been given orders. And so there are angels of blessings and there are angels of torture. And so the person's deeds which failed him or her, the sentencing will be in accordance with that. They'll be driven to the fire. And we shall drive the criminals to hellfire in a thirsty state. None shall have the power of intercession for these people. They will call out like this. Now we have no intercessors nor a close friend to help us. That's when they will begin to scream and cry. And some of them will scream and say, Oh, our Lord, just give us another chance. Give us another chance. But there is no response from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who on the day of judgment is brought who had lived the most comfortable and luxurious and happy life ever from the beginning of creation to the end of time and he will be dipped once into hellfire because of bad deeds once and taken out and the angels will ask him what do you remember he will say I do not remember a single happy moment ever truly and literally the man forgets every single happy moment he has ever had the angels will say you have been given the chances the worst of them in the front. There will be believers. However, they showed off their deeds. The scholar who showed off his knowledge for the sake of being called a scholar. The reciter who so showed off his or her recitation so that people can praise them. The charity giver who cha gave charity so that people will say what a generous person. The person who died a martyr but only so that people can build monuments out of him. Their intentions were not for Allah. Their intentions were for people. These among the believers will be the first with whom hellfire will be ignited. They will all reach the third and last station. Now, the crossing. 